Wednesday, September 24, 1913. Suppose we were to ask you to look forward a little space, and try to imagine the effect of our communications, as viewed in relation to the ultimate outcome of your present state of mind. What then, think you, should have been the issue of events, as we see them from our own sphere in the spirit world? It would be something like the effect of sunlight when it is projected into a sea mist, which mist gradually vanishes away, and the scene it enveloped becomes clearer to the vision, and more beautiful than when dimly discerned through the enveloping mist. So do we view your minds, and if the sun for a while dazzles and perplexes rather than clarifies the sight, you know that the end is light, and the end of all that light in whom there is no darkness at all. Yet light is not conducive to peace always, but, in its passage, often creates a series of vibrations which bring destruction to those species of living creatures which are not fashioned to survive in the light of the sun. Let them go, and, for yourself, go onward, and as you go your eyes will become used to the greater light, the greater beauty of the love of God, the very intensity of which, blended as it is with infinite wisdom, is perplexing to those who are not altogether of the light. And now, dear son, Listen while we tell you of one more scene which has gladdened us here in these regions of God's own light. We were wandering a short time ago in a beautiful woodland place, and, as we went we talked a little, but not more than a little because of the sense of music which seemed to absorb all else into its own holy silence. Then, standing in the pathway in front of us, whom should we see but an angel from a higher sphere? He stood and looked on us with a smile, but did not speak and we became aware that he had a message for one of us especially. It was so, for as we halted and stood in expectation, he came forward, and, lifting the cloak he wore amber it was in colour, he placed his arm, and it, round my shoulder and, laying his cheek on my hair, for he was much taller than I am, he said softly, My child, I am sent to you from the master whom you have learned to trust, and the way before you is seen by him but not by you. You will be given strength for whatever you have to do and you have been chosen for a mission which is new to you in your service here. You will be able, of course, to visit these your friends at will, but now you must leave them for a time and I will show you your new home and duties. Then the others gathered round me and kissed me and held my hands in theirs. They were as glad as I only that is not quite the word to use in my case, it is not peaceful enough. After a while, when he had let us talk and wonder what his message meant, he came forward once more and this time took me by the hand and led me away. We walked for a little time and then I felt my feet leave the ground and we went through the air. I was not afraid, for his strength was given to me. We passed over a high mountain range where many palaces were, and, at last, after a fairly long journey, we descended in a city where I had not been before. The light was not unkind, but my eyes were not used to such a degree of brightness. However, I soon made out that we were in a garden surrounding a large building, with steps up to it all along the front, at the top of which was a kind of terrace. The building seemed all of one piece of material of different hues, pink and blue and red and yellow, which shone like gold, but softly. Up these we went, and at the great doorway, without any door to it, we met a very beautiful lady, stately but not proud. She was the angel of the House of Sorrow. You wonder at the word used in this connection. What it means is this, the sorrow is not of those who dwell there, but is the lot of those to whom they minister. The sorrowful ones are those on earth, and it is the business of the residents in this house to send to them vibrations which have the effect of neutralizing the vibrations of sorrowful hearts on earth. You must understand that here we have to get at the bottom of things, and learn the cause of things, and that is a very deep study, only learned in gradual stages bit by bit. I therefore speak of the causes of things when I use the word vibrations, as one you will understand best. She received me very kindly and took me within, where she showed me over part of the place. It was quite unlike anything on earth, so it is hard to describe. But I may say that the whole house seemed to vibrate with life, and to respond to our own will and vitality. This, then, is my present and latest phase of service, and a very happy one it promises to be. But I have only just begun to understand the prayers which are brought to us there unregistered, and the sighs of those in trouble we hear, or rather, they are also registered, and we see or feel them, as it were, and send out our own vibrations in answer. This in time becomes involuntary, but is a great effort at first, I find it so. But even the effort has a reflex blessing on those who work so. 
There are many such places here, as I learn, all in touch with earth, which at present would seem impossible to me except that, as the effects are also registered back again to us, I know the amount of comfort and help we send. I only am on duty for a short space at one time, and then go out and see the sights of this city and its neighbourhood. And very glorious it all is, even more beautiful than my old sphere, which I also revisit to see my friends. So you can imagine the talks we have when we do meet. That is almost as great a joy as the work itself. Peace in Jesus our Lord is the atmosphere all around us. And this is the land where there is no darkness and, when those mists are of the past, dear, you will come here, and I will show you all until you are perhaps able to take me by the hand, as he did, and lead me to see the work in your own sphere. You think I am ambitious for you, dear lad. Well, so I am, and that is a mother's, shall I say weakness, or rather blessing. Goodbye dear. Your own heart at this moment is a witness that this is all real, for I can see it glowing happy and bright, and that is gladness also to me your mother, dear son. Good night, then, and God will keep you and yours in his peace.